pastor, and I'm going to say Jesus. No, the, the cry to the Lord, Marcus, is, is based upon somebody that's crying out for him to help them. They are in a place that they can't get out by themselves. They are in a mess that they might have created, but they can't uncreate. They are in a situation where there's no happiness, where there's no peace, where there's no hope. They're in a place where they realize there's something more. And they realize that the only answer is to call upon the Lord. We've got to come to the realization that there is a desired destination. It is the same for the Jews and the Gentiles and every human being that lives. And that's to be restored to relationship with God, which involves being saved from the power and the effects of sin. I said from the power and the effects of sin. In order to arrive there, we must follow the steps. We must follow the steps which Paul took us in reverse. So Brother Shannon, if you help me, I want to start at 15, go back to 14. Give me 15 first. There we go. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Now anybody that that makes sense to, I want you to come up here and begin to teach this lesson. Who in the world cares about beautiful feet? What does that even make sense? Huh? How beautiful are the feet? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace? It seems foolish on the surface until we understand that that word beautiful comes from the Greek word horeos, H-O-R-A-I-O-S. And it means, Brother Pete, not beautiful as we would, we would find somebody attractive, but it's talking about, it's the same word that would describe somebody being in the prime of their life. It is the same word that would describe you came right at the perfect time. Okay? When something is at its best. The sun is beautiful when it's at its top. It's the perfect time. It's the perfect uh, uh, timing. It's, it's the, the most beautiful time for it to come out. When something's at its best, the prime of life. The word feet comes from the Greek word P-O-U-S, which I'm not sure how you would pronounce that, pow or pals, and refers to a person in motion. It is, it is for instance, if, if we say how, we're counting heads or we're counting noses, it's a, a word called metonymy, which it, you give a, it, it's a, a human characteristic that describes the people. So feet is talking about those that go and preach the gospel at the perfect time. So it's referring to the perfect time to go and preach a message of peace and hope through the good news of Jesus Christ. So they're sent at the right time. Now follow me as I go back. Have I managed to lose everybody? Somebody said, yeah, I think. <laughs> Just stay there. We're going to get there. So they are sent. Now, I don't have time to take you there, but you go to Matthew chapter 28, uh, Mark chapter 16, Luke chapter 24, and Acts chapter number 1 to find out how they were sent. Okay? And then they are sent to preach. I'm starting at the bottom. They're going to preach. How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? So preach, hear, believe, and call. Do you see how it's going backwards there? They're going to preach the word. They're going to hear the word preached. They're going to believe what they heard preached. And then they'll call on the Lord. So preach the word, which will be heard. The hearers will then believe. And then believing will be saved. 
But then verse number 16 throws a cog in the wheel because it says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Esaias, that's Isaiah, saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Esaias saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So they preach the word. They hear the word. They believe the word. They call on the Lord. But then one caveat is inserted, Brother David, when the, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul quotes the book of Isaiah when he refers to they have not obeyed the gospel. And then Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? If you truly believe, if you believe the report, the preaching, the word of God, you will obey it. Verse number 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Listen to me. How beautiful are the feet. Now I can tell you for a fact, I'm not going to prove it, but I tell you for a fact, that ain't applying to me in the natural. Because I've got some jacked up feet. But it is applying to me in the spiritual. Because every time I deliver, I've heard people say before, I've even thought it. Here, this, this is how nutty this is, Brother Billy. I've even thought it before. It's, it's preach something so effective and so powerful, and I would say, I wish so-and-so would have been there to hear it. Like everybody else don't matter or something. You know. What I'm telling you is, is when we deliver the Word of God, it's the perfect time. When we deliver the word of God, Brother David, it's the perfect time. He knows what we need to hear. He knows what the word means to us. Uh, and he knows what the word will do for us uh, if we'll just hear it and believe it. And by virtue of believing it, we obey it. The word of peace, the word of good news. Believe it and obey it. I'm telling you now, you, I wanted to ask you the rhetorical question earlier, or the, the question earlier, where does hope come from? Where do things not seen come from? I want to let you know that hope comes from the Word of God. Things not seen comes from the Word of God. Listen to me. It's when I hear, it's when I hear the prophets write in the Scripture, whosoever will. It's when I hear Peter say on the day of Pentecost, the, the promise... The promise is unto you. It's when I hear the psalmist say, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's when I hear the dead in Christ shall rise first, then which we which are alive and remain shall be called up to meet them in the air. It's when I hear he that hath begun a good work in you will finish it. It's when I hear greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It's when when I hear, delight thyself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. It's when I hear we have an anchor, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. It's when I hear receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. I hear it. I believe it. I have hope. I have evidence. I have proof by faith. And it's at the perfect time. It's at the perfect time. Just, oh, just when, God, have mercy. Just when I need it. Just when I needed hope. Just when I needed a chance. Just when I needed to hear what must I do to be saved. It's a perfect time. Beautiful. Prime, beautiful time. Beautiful time. It's at the perfect time. The word works. Let us go forward. Our feet have got to go and spread the gospel, share the gospel. It's the perfect time. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The time is perfect to preach the word of faith, the plan of salvation, the way to heaven. We preach it. Turn to your neighbor and say, he preaches it. Do it again. It's the word of God. Brother David, we are born again by the Word of God. It's the Word of God that hell can't touch. It's the Word of God that circumstances don't cancel out. It's the Word of God which liveth and abideth forever. 
It's the Word of God. It's the Word of God where I'll find answers for every question I have. It's the Word of God where I'm... Oh, God. It's the Word of God where I'm going to find the answer to every one of life's questions. The Bible says the feet are beautiful. The going forth, the preaching of the... Oh, Lord Jesus. I, God have mercy. Brother David, it's at the perfect time. It's, it's, yes, sir. Absolutely. Heaven on the whole armor of God. That, that's the preaching of the word. It's complete. It's perfect. Listen to me. There may have been a time... How many of you have favorite preachers? All the rest of y'all telling a story. We all, we all have folks we like to listen to better than others. Reckon how many times we've missed the divine word of God because we shut somebody off. I don't know what in the world they got him preaching here for. Because you see, Brother Billy, it ain't got nothing to do with the preacher. It's all about the word. It's all about the word getting in these ears, Brother Pete. And when I hear it, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God what's that word saying that word saying I got to do this so I, I believe it so guess what I'm going to do it I had somebody I've had two people do this at least two maybe three I can't remember exactly about the third one but I've had two people tell me I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that if the Lord comes today, I'm going to hell. Now, Brother Robbie, it wasn't you, obviously. <laughs> but you know something, Brother Robbie, the truth of the matter is, they don't really believe that. Because if they did, there's not enough approval of your peers there's not enough gold in Fort Knox. There's not enough bad peer pressure or positive peer pressure to stop you from making things right with God. Because the book says we have an advocate. The book says, oh, I'm, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong in here. God have mercy. The book says he's not slack concerning his promises. Some would count slackness. He's just long-suffering toward us. Not willing that any should perish. But that all would come to repentance. I had somebody tell me the other day, Sister Maria, if I had a dollar for every time I've been told this, I could have put a good offering in this morning. I'm scared I can't make it. I want to do it, but I'm scared I can't make it. What about my friends? What about this? What about that? What about this? Had somebody talk to me the other day about what am I going to do about my business? I do things that ain't right. What, what am I going to do about my business? The only, the only problem with that, Brother Manning, is if there's really nothing I can do with that. Because their faith is in the wrong place. Because if we have true faith in God, If God be for us, who can be against us? As I said earlier, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Huh. I had a title on this, but I changed it. I told Brother Shannon he needed to help me because my title was dumb. Because I had faith y'all would laugh. But the Bible says the feet of them that preach the gospel are beautiful. The gospel is the perfect time to go spread the gospel. Right now, it's the perfect time. But I want to ask you, how, how beautiful are your ears? How, are, are you ready? Or are you ready for God to take a hold of your life? If you're not ready, it ain't happening. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. What's it going to take for you to get ready? 
What's going to have to happen before you will have enough faith to call on the Lord? Say, man, there you go, getting all spooky and scary and stuff. No, I'm not in the business of scaring people into the altar. I want to get them to believe enough to get in the altar. <laughs> that the, oh God, that the only true hope you have, your Uggs are going to get holes in them. Your North Face is going to get filthy dirty. Your body's going to fail you. I just want to think, let me, let me give you this illustration and then I'm going to close. I've preached this message before, a whole message, but when Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, there was a man that the Bible says, Sister Maria, they laid him there daily at the gate, which is called Beautiful. And here's what I'm trying to do today. Okay, I'm trying to be like Peter and John. Because they went up the hour of prayer. And this old boy, his livelihood depended on people putting money in his can. And Peter and John stopped by him, Brother Billy, and they said, look on us. And the Bible says, Brother Rice, they gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Now, we all know, we all know what he was expecting, right? Something that made a little noise when it dropped in the can. Something that caused his wrist to dip a little bit when it hit the bottom. But then Peter says, boy, I... God, have mercy right now. Let this speak to you. Silver and gold have I none. Now think about the, the, the lame man for just a minute. What's he going to say right that second? He's on down the road, brother. You're holding up traffic. Because I saw a dude back there that always puts a good drop in the bucket. Listen to me. I, you, silver and gold have I none. Oh man, then what you doing then? Yeah, what, what you gonna you gonna tell me about a you gonna tell me about a, a, my horoscope or something? You know, I mean I mean really, when Peter says silver and gold have I none, he ceased to be of use to the lame man because the lame man's faith was in silver and gold. So Peter says, silver and gold have I none, which destroyed, remember, he gave, listen, I'm running early anyway, so just hang with me. He, the Bible says, Brother Mark, he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, silver and gold have I none. That expectation went. Gone. But then he says, but such as I have, give I thee. So what he did was, he didn't destroy his faith. He just redirected it. I come, I come to tell you about something better than silver and gold, buddy. Such as I have. Y'all don't believe me right now, but the anointing is on me very, very strong. Somebody hear this. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now listen to me. We know what happens next, but you know what he did, Sister Maria? He took his faith from the bucket, from silver and gold. Why did he, oh Lord, help me right now. Why did he, he have to keep coming back every day? Because it's going to run out, Brother David. 
He took what he got that morning and went to the market. Somebody carried him to the market and he paid it off. And then the next day he's back to do it again. Let me tell you something. That was the last day that Brother Layman ever sat at the gate beautiful. Because once his faith left from the temporary things, from the things that use up, from the things that don't last anymore, till he, he didn't put his faith in healing. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He put his faith in the name of Jesus. And then he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. He redirected his faith from carnal earthly things to holy godly things, from temporary things to things that are eternal. I don't care if I live to be 996 years, Sister Maria. There ain't enough devils in hell to take away from me what I feel right now. Not just when I got the Holy Ghost, but when I come to the realization that my faith is not in this. Too fat to pull out. My faith is not in that. My faith is not in you. My faith is not in this building. My faith is not in this city. My faith is not in these shoes or this tie or this microphone. But my faith is in God. My faith ain't in the drummer being here or the right piano player being here or the right song getting played. But I run my faith is in God. My faith is in God, Brother David, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and I remember one of my good friends, boy, I was raised up with all of my life. Saw him recently, I told him, I said, I love you. I just want you to know I love you. He said, I know you do. I love you too. But I remember, Brother David, when I told him, I said, man, you need to get right with God. And you know what he said, Brother Billy? I know I do, but I ain't ready. I'm not ready. And you know what? That's sad. But it's also true among us. Just a little play on words and I'm closing. Remember when we were little kids? We used to have a redbud tree in our yard. It's not there anymore. It's set over on the property line, kind of Marcus, right out by the right out by the sidewalk. Wasn't a big tree, just a just a little redbud tree. About that big around. And uh, we did something back in those days you don't hear of much anymore. We played outside. And uh, we play hide and go seek. And Brother Richard, we, we'd have to stick our face in that tree, I remember. You got to hide your face, Sister Maria. And you're supposed to count to 100. But old Peter... I had the fastest counter. One of the different fives has to be. <laughs> but you know, Brother Ray, there ain't nothing like them lifting up their head and saying, Ready or not? Hold up, you got to count to 50 now. I ain't hid yet. How many remember that? <laughs> count again, I ain't hid yet. But there's going to be a time. And you know what, Sister Maria? I think it's going to be an incredibly bittersweet moment for the Lord God Almighty. When he raises his head up on the throne and tells Gabriel, all right, buddy, today's the day. Go blow the horn. Because ready or not. I talk to people, as I'm handing out cards, I talk to people all the time. Backsliders. Backsliders are the world's worst. I'm coming back. I talked to an old boy this week. He said, that's my home church. I was raised there. He ain't been in this church in my lifetime. We're talking about before I was born. 
I don't recall him ever being here. I talked to him this week. He, he hollered at me. He said, GL, come here. I want to talk to you. I, I want to come back to church. That's my home church. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. And when I went and paid for my food, Brother Billy, my heart was breaking. My heart was breaking, Brother Pete. Because all I could think, because I said, man, come home. We'd love to have you. There's all kinds of people coming that used to come. Come on, man. We, oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. My hope and prayer is that that's not going through my mind when I stand over his casket. You say, oh, you're doom and gloom. No, I'm not doom and gloom. I'm just dealing with reality. Look at the world. Look around you. Look around you. Look around you. Sister Maria, we're probably within a year. We're probably within a year until there are laws in place to regulate what we can preach over our pulpit. Ready or not, stand with me.